Buster Crest Army, where you at? Your motivation guy. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I am back, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, to bring you guys the latest and greatest tips to make you guys the best Fortnite player you could possibly be. And it's also my job as your motivation guy to make you the best person you can possibly be as well. So don't fret, don't be discouraged, keep your head up, stay positive, don't, you know, dwell on negative thoughts because you're gonna do great, but you have to believe it first, all right? You know, trios are an important part of competitive Fortnite. In fact, like, if you guys wanna see yourself going pro someday, you have to be able to to do well in whatever format the competition takes in really order to fill up your resume. And so one of the best accomplishments that you can achieve in this case is becoming a great IGL. So what is an IGL and how do you learn the ropes? Well, that's why we're here today to really find out and show you guys how to get ready. But before we do that, man, it's time to get my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that bunch of crunch and let's get this going. All right, so before we begin, let's take a quick moment to really have a refresher on what an IGL does for the team. An IGL is possibly like the most important player on the team, not just because they should have had the most amount of experience, but because they lead the team towards victory with their decision-making skills. After all, like that's what an IGL stands for. It's an in-game leader. So being an IGL can be an attractive title to have, especially if you could be recognized by the community as a really great one. And so just like a player such as Arkham, who is considered one of the best IGLs in the field today or even Booga who can really give clear and concise orders. Who wouldn't want to be like that? However, be warned guys, this IGO has to be able to carry the entire weight of the team. And because of that, man, it's also gonna end up also carrying the weight of any major losses, all right? Despite this, losses are natural and you need to have the ability to reflect and really come out stronger than ever. So guys, remember to keep the thick skin, but your mind open. So now let's go a little deeper into qualifications. Fortnite has many different roles, such as a tarper and fragger and a support. Each of these roles also has an optimal loadout they should be carrying. An IGL must have an understanding of each role if they intend to guide a team composed of these types of players. So if you're fresh to Fortnite and have never had any experience playing a team, then we highly recommend that you find a trio and start learning the ropes before aiming for a role as an IGO. The best way to get qualified is to play in teams. You know, participate in competitions to really familiarize yourself with the competitive rule set. And most importantly, do well in those competitions so you can earn experience in the late game and storm surge. Remember guys, you don't need to be a master to be an IGO for a team. Like once you've had some experience, you can just start acting as the IGO for your trio and in order to learn how the responsibility works. So if your team trusts your judgment, then this can happen naturally. And just from there, it's all about showing them that they put the trust in the right person. Let me ask you this. You guys need help reaching the level of skill that you need to become an IGO? Then click on the link below and visit proguys.com. There you can receive professional coaching, just like the pros get at their boot camps. Our team of coaches can help you identify where you need to improve so you can do better at any stage of the game, whether it be an early game or mid game or late game. And don't forget guys to use code winter on checkout. You're going to get 20% off all of our subscription services. It's never been cheaper to really improve at Fortnite. All right, guys, so now into some responsibility, shall we? An IGL must be begin planning out games before a tournament even starts. They should even take time to communicate with their team members and really plan out what landing spots they should be aiming for when they finally enter a match. Usually this means keeping up with the current meta and proposing new loot routes that offer the best chances of getting properly equipped. This can include having the answer to questions such as, all right, where are we landing? Like, what are we looting? How long are we going to stick around? The longer the match lasts, the more these questions are going to turn into. Where do we get more mats? Can we retake the high ground from the players above us? You know, sometimes the answers to these questions can be acquired by analyzing your previous games. VOD reviewing is especially important for the IGO since they should be the ones analyzing and guiding their teammates through the review and feedback. They must have an extra attention to detail and not be shy about pointing out mistakes. So what about in-game duties? So the IGO should pay close attention to their teammates during the match. The worst thing that can happen is that players start straying from the pack, which makes them easy pickings for other trios. In Chapter 3, sticking together is optimal if you guys want to revive players quickly, you know, heal them, or just keep any drop loot nearby if somebody dies in general like you also want to prevent your teammates from soloing since this breaks apart the team and with the less people to really cover each role it forces you and your remaining teammates to really pick up the slack all right so keeping an eye on what your teammates are doing is vital towards leading them to victory however one common mistake especially with newer and younger igls is just 
falling into the bad habit of just micromanaging your teammates. No, no, no. Your teammate does not always need to be told exactly when to go after an enemy player or when to build or who they should be supporting. The whole purpose of the three team structure is to divide the responsibilities of each player so that no one person is in charge of doing everything at once. So show some trust in your teammates as well and they're going to just fight harder to prove that they can handle it. Remember guys, an IGL is a leader who facilitates the jobs of the teams and guides them, not the puppet master just pulling all the strings. All right guys, so the next tip is all about giving out commands as an IGL. In this position, you need to be accustomed to speaking your mind, but also giving orders and relying on your teammates to follow them. So if you've been playing on solo, then you know the need to talk might not be something you're used to, but it's definitely something that you're gonna have to work on. Sometimes it comes naturally and sometimes it takes practice, but you can get there. You know, one other note is that aside from having the confidence to speak, you also need to prioritize your words. You know, be clear and concise. Fortnite is a fast paced game. And so when you tell your teammates to perform and act, they need to understand what it is that you're saying. You know, an IGL should train yourself to be cool and collected and, you know, use your words at the right time. The team gets no benefit if your whole group is just screaming over the comms during a high stakes battle. This causes confusion. And if the other team isn't freaking out, then they can just organize themselves better and just take you guys out. So if you really want to get your teammates attention, you can also try using real names rather than usernames. This creates urgency and catches the attention of the person that you're trying to speak to. Ever had a nickname growing up, but suddenly you get in trouble and your nickname that is Jimmy now becomes James? Now you know something as serious is up when your mom says James. So following up from the previous tip, you also need to understand the difference between a command and a statement. Like when you play casual games with friends, you can get accustomed to making remarks about the game or about other players. You might also have the tendency to make a statement such as I'm taking fire or I'm low on health. While this may seem like a very informative statement to make, it isn't the most optimal. Instead, turn those statements into commands so that every word that comes out of your mouth as an IGL is directing your teammate towards a solution rather than just telling them what the problem is. Like build a box, give me heels, you know, give me minis. It's telling your team, you know, what to do and really keeps the comms clear for other important information. In addition, you should always command things ahead of time rather than on the spot. Like this might not always be possible depending on the scenario However, you should do your best to give your teammates time to react to new information rather than just assuming that they're going to be able to execute it at the moment that it's given. So give your intentions ahead of time and you're going to find yourself moving as a unit rather than just leaving players behind by accident. Because, you know, a trio has a limited number of players that all rules are assigned to a singular person. As an IGO, you're most likely going to be in charge of tarping. Tarping is a late game skill for when you have limited space and constantly moving storm. You're going to be placing down floors, ceilings, walls to form a tunnel that's going to keep you and your team moving along with the storm. So if you plan to IGL, also plan to become a really good builder and editor. So to get yourself ready to perform this duty, you're going to need to make sure that you have your mats maxed out by the late game. You also want to make sure that you can just spot any opportunities to refresh your supplies at a moment's notice. So while you may be like working as a team, your eyes are just extra important as you watch out for players just running above you and below you. And so this means guys knowing when the optimal time to engage is going to be and just being able to adjust your builds so you can just have have good cover while you and your teammates loot your fallen opponents. You know, good refresh tools are the Harpoon Gun and also the Spider-Man Mythic, which has the secret ability of just pulling items closer to you. All right, don't forget to check out Pro Guys after the video, and you're going to find out how you can unleash your inner potential. But you're going to tell me where you actually motivation guy is back. Hope you guys found the video useful and that you learned some tips. Also, feel free to leave a comment and let us know, you know, if there's anything that you would be interested in learning more about. So remember, guys, being an IGO is a big responsibility. However, it's not impossible if you practice enough and take the initiative. So keep in mind, guys, who knows? Maybe you'll be like the next Arkham, man, and just changing the game. Keep doing your thing. I'm proud of you, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.